Hey guys, what's going on? And today is actually our year review of the Xbox Series X. Yeah, it's been a year since this came out, and if you've been following me for that long, you kind of you might have seen the videos already done about you know when I unboxed it, my my first impressions, and just you know how how the system was after I got it. Well, after having the system for about a year, here's just a few things that I thought about being an early adopter, what my impressions was, and should you get it? Is something is this something that you're interested in getting, and would it be something that you may want to get? So I'm just gonna dive into it, and just a little disclaimer: I have been someone that's been following Xbox for years. I was I was really excited to be someone to actually get the system when it launched, and. You know, there's probably gonna be a little bit of bias, but you know, I'm gonna be trying to be as honest as possible. So if you're out there trying to buy one, you can kind of get a good idea of if this is something that is the right system for you. And is it worth $500 if you're fortunate enough to even get one right now? Let's get right into it. So, you know, starting off with it, the most weirdest thing happened. I, like I said, I had this thing for a year. Within a few months of having it, I realized I, I love it. Does the system, is the system too big? Um, you know the size you know it's not as big as, as you think it, it actually like the size of it. I actually like the way it looks it just looks like a little micro tower and it f fits great in my setup other people's setups will vary but i'd like the way it fits in my setup um one thing with the matte black is for some reason it gets super super oily and i don't know why to the point where i had a mark going all the way down and I, I don't know what caused it and it's very hard to clean I've heard people talk about it it's very it's not a lot of people talk about it, but I heard a few people online talk about it and it's just a headache to clean to the point where I end up buying a dbrand skin to slap on the front of my series X and if you look at it you will not notice it my wife did a great job of helping me put that skin on but yeah there's a dbrand skin on the front of it because anytime the sun comes in and hits it you just see that long mark down the system and when you spend five hundred dollars to see some ugly looking mark going down it's horrible i don't even know where that oil came from but there it is but besides that as far as functionality goes well i will say with having the system for a year it is pretty quiet from time to time certain games uh that you play you do hear the fans kick on but it is rare and you know, it's it's extremely rare. Um, you know, off the top of my head, I can't think of a game that really puts in that work uh, to to make it really kick in those fans. But you know, and I try to keep mine a little clean. I see dust, dust sometimes in the back, and I try to clean that off. But for the most part, it it doesn't really make a lot of noise. Most of the time, it's quiet. Here, I'm playing the new Forza, Forza Horizon Five, which is arguably one of the best looking games that you can get. And it's just whisper silent, like you really can't hear it. And that's that's just a good that's just touting how well the system is when it comes to fans and just airflow and everything. I, I just love it. So within this year of having the system, you would think that maybe there's a chance that it got a little bit louder, but no, for the most part it's pretty quiet. And like I said, it's very rare that you actually do hear the fans kick on. But a lot of times when you're playing a game, either you hear the sound coming out your speakers or you hear the sound coming out your headphones, and then you can't even hear it regardless. Unlike the PlayStation 4, that you could turn the game on, have the volume up, you still hear the thing sound like a jet engine. So, you know, the system's super, super silent. Now, this is something that has all the systems, you know. I have a PlayStation 5, I have a Series X, I have an OLED Switch, and games look so good on this. I usually prefer to play games on my Xbox because it seems like multiplayer games look better on the Series X than they do on my PlayStation 5. Um, on top of that, uh, there are some games like, for example, I'm a huge Overwatch fan, you know, and, and sometimes me and my wife will play, but the thing is, Overwatch, they did a patch for Overwatch on the Xbox where they gave 4K support, where on the PlayStation 4, 5, whatever you have, it does not have that, so it's just playing at 1080p. So there's even things like that at times where you notice a difference, but, you know, Microsoft did a really, really good job of making uh upgrading and support, whether it's for current gen games, last gen games, improving it, where the 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 resolution the frames and all that just looks so much better um, or they just you know they just they look better than they did before so you know that's one thing i really appreciate in getting it games that look really good on the series x um it's rare that you see too much sluggishness or 
lagging. The game should run very well. With that being the case, there are even scenario where some games, you know, you, you can, you notice it has that horsepower. Games like Cyberpunk, for example, when everyone was running around talking about how Cyberpunk had all these bugs. Yeah, on the Xbox, there were the bugs as well too, but they performed, the, the game performed really well. I had friends that had a PlayStation 5 that the game kept crashing and having issues. And Cyberpunk for me was playable. It was still buggy, but it was playable. People on PlayStation that I know personally, they couldn't even drive down the street without the game just totally crashing and kicking them out to the point where I guess Sony had to pull the game from the store. So, you know, again, that just has to go to the fact that this Xbox is, I just, I just love it when it comes to, to performance. As far as like store space goes, one thing I have had a problem with is the store space. I went out and I did buy the Seagate expansion drive and I know there's more storage now than when I bought it, but I have the one terabyte and I know they have a two terabyte coming out and a 512, which I don't know who that's going to be good for. But even with the internal terabyte of storage, I have um, pretty much I have a terabyte, the built in, which you get not really a full terabyte. I think you get like around 800 ish gigs after you calculate the OS. Um, I have the Seagate expansion card and I have a two terabyte external regular hard drive for standard Xbox games. I have roughly around four terabytes of hard drive space in that and I still find myself running out of space because the problem is games are getting so big. Uh, as much as I love my Xbox, they needed to come out with at least two terabytes for this and I, that probably would have upped the cost. If it came out and it was $600, I probably would have got it anyways because it's something that was vastly needed and you know then I could have still bought the Seagate expansion drive but now you're gonna want to probably look at getting the, the two terabyte expansion drive which is gonna run you around four hundred dollars so you know ultimately that's up to you but storage is still a little rough with these games with the beautiful almost photo uh, photorealistic quality games and uh, let me tell you some of these games I, I know I'm back on the quality again but some of these games do look photorealistic but you know, the nice thing about the Xbox is though, with that expansion drive, you just pop it in the back and you don't really think about it anymore. I mean, as long as you have the space, you pop it in, it works as if it's just part of the storage. You don't have to open it up, pry it, afraid, be afraid of breaking something. Yes, tech people probably aren't gonna worry too much, but for those who don't really know about it, that's something that they may be a little worried or concerned about or a little hesitant to doing just because opening up their $500 system that is the hardest thing to get under the sun right now may not be the first thing they want to do once they buy it. There's, you know, there's a lot of different features and a lot of improvements that Microsoft has done in the past year. Things like Quick Resume. I love Quick Resume. And to some people, I know when it came out, people were like, oh, what I need Quick Resume for, I don't care about that. But the, the fact that you could be playing a single player game and then your friend comes and says, hey, you wanna jump on this multiplayer game? Then you're playing a game like, let's say, even though it's exclusive to PlayStation, let's say you're playing a game like Returnal uh, that just recently has save points added to it, but you know, you're not at the checkpoint yet in this single player game, you're not at a save point. Well, you have to say, well, hold on, I have to keep going until I get to that point. Well, now in a game like you know, now using the Series X with its quick resume, you can just jump into that multiplayer game and then when you're done, you can jump back. And that feature is so great. And, you know, I kind of forget that it's even a feature until I do jump to my PlayStation and then I run into those issues. But like I said, Microsoft has had a few different little updates here and there um, over the year. You know, they added 4K resolution to the, to the dashboard, which arguably should have been there by default, as well as the, when you put on the headphones, it mutes the sound and just start doing that now. Um, but the one of the biggest selling points of the Xbox was so great is Game Pass. Just the sheer lineup of games, especially day one exclusives through Microsoft. Um, you know, that alone, you can buy the system by alone and just have a plethora of really popular games that are coming out. Some are going to be exclusive to the Series X and PC. Some are on Xbox One. The vast majority are still on Xbox One. But mark my words in time, that support's probably going to trickle off because there's certain games already like Forza Motorsport, not the Forza that just came out, but the one in the future, they're already saying it's not going to support the one. Um, Starfield is not looking to support the one. Uh, Medium and Flight Simulator already don't support the Xbox One either. Now, Microsoft is gonna remedy those issues with allowing you to stream those games to your system, but ultimately you're not gonna get all those really nice graphic enhancements like, you know, 
uh, probably ray tracing, like really nice looking ray tracing or HDR and things like that. And if you want that real raw experience, you're gonna have to get a Series X so or S. Ultimately, I guess the short, the long story short version of this video is, you know, how have I been enjoying it all around? For the most part, I, I mean, I love the system. It, it doesn't have anything really, really groundbreaking, but with the things that they're doing, it's just great. And you, and for the most part, every time you hear about some type of news with Microsoft or Xbox, it's something really, really good and just exciting to hear. Yes, some of their biggest games like Halo Infinite coming out next month, it, it looks, it doesn't look like a next gen game. It, it looks really, really good and it, you know, but I think as time goes on and I heard that they are gonna add ray tracing later on, that game will look more beautiful, I guess you could say. Ultimately, this is, you definitely know that this is a next gen experience when you fully immerse yourself into having this system. You probably will notice it right out the gate. And yeah, you can still get away with an Xbox One, but if you have the ability to, I would definitely jump on this. Why you can, because I highly doubt you'll regret it. Like, I, I think most people that get the system, regardless if you're coming from PlayStation or PC or anything, you'll really, really enjoy it because you're not gonna spend $500 even on PC. People say, oh, I, why do I need an Xbox when I have a PC? Because what you're getting for $500 in that little box um, is great for that price. Um, but yeah, you know, it's I, I'm enjoying it. I love it. You know, like there's still little things that they can fix here and there, but for the most part, I think it's a really great experience. It's really fun. I, you know, I just enjoy playing it when I have the time to sit down and play something, you know. So, you know, that's just my review on it. You know, like I said, games look great, games run great. This thing rarely, if ever, crashes, which is more than I could say for my PlayStation 5. Um, with all the updates, my Xbox is even on beta software and it doesn't even crash, really. Maybe once or twice, maybe, where my PlayStation 5 is on stock software that everyone else has and it crashes pretty frequently. <laughs> So, but anyway, that's just my thoughts. That's just my review on it. I think it's a great system. I think it's worth your money. My video last year was more so, hey, hang on, let's see what happened. And I think that still stands. It wasn't really much of anything. And it was a while before there's any really exclusive games coming that wasn't going to be on the one. But now with we're going into 2022 um, and Xboxes are still hard to come by. I think it's really good to get that system and play it at the at the best quality that you can. And you know, especially since Microsoft is probably going to be dropping support for a lot of games um, and games that you may like. You know, so anyway, this video is a little bit longer than I was planning on being. I hope you guys enjoy. Comment down below if you agree, disagree. If you have a system, if you're thinking about getting one, if you're trying to get one, comment all that down below. I'm very interested to hear what you guys have to say about the Series X. And I will be having a video coming up soon about the PlayStation, my thoughts on it, having it for a year, what I what I think about it. So if you're interested or curious, hit the bell to make sure that you'll be notified when that video goes live. It should be up soon. And like I said, just subscribe. Our channel is growing um, every day. It seems like we have another subscriber. So make sure if you're not a part of that, be a part of it. I was a good time to join. But anyway, thanks so much for watching this whole video and we'll see you all in the next one.